Welcome back to part two of cleaning this small 50 gallon aquarium. We're in the middle of doing a, a 10 gallon water change in a 50 gallon tank. I typically don't promote aquariums smaller than 50 gallons. In fact, other than a single freshwater tank, I don't do any aquariums that are smaller than 50 gallons. Uh, this particular one I've been doing since 1994. I've watched their entire family of children grow up who are now beginning to enter college. We're in the middle of this uh, 10 gallon water change. We're vacuuming the gravel and changing out the decorations in the tank. We just started on the second half of vacuuming the gravel. We're trying to extract the debris that's trapped down within the granules of gravel. This is an under gravel filtered system. And so not only is this where the biological filter is, this is also where a lot of the debris gets trapped. And the vacuuming is extracting the debris from between those granules, allowing a greater flow of water. out 10 gallons of salt water, dirty salt water. I also checked the salt level before I started and it wasn't on the high side but it was high enough that I want to add some fresh water back to the tank. They've got two choices of fresh water and the point of the fresh water is to bring that salinity back down. So your two choices of fresh water, one would be some form of purified water, uh, the other would be water out of the faucet. You want to be careful with water out of the faucet. It may contain chlorine or chloramines, which is a combination of chlorine and ammonia. There are some simple dechlorinators that'll help remove this. Basically, if you can smell chlorine when you're near the faucet, you know you've got a problem. You want to definitely consider adding some dechlorinator at that time. We'll go ahead and discard the old salt water by pouring it down the toilet and then we'll get ready to put our new salt water back in. We're only gonna add about two gallons of fresh water to this tank, so I'm gonna take it right out of the faucet and I'll squirt a little dechlorinator in there as well. Unless you live in some place where there's extreme water conditions such as high iron content, silicate content, or seepage or runoff from some agricultural development, typically, water right out of the faucet is fine to use in an aquarium. Although, you may have to use a dechlorinator or some product to help remove the chlorine and ammonia that was put into the water by the city. And there's our two gallons of fresh water. Before we put that fresh water into the tank, this being a saltwater tank, it has a particular pH that we want to strive for. Um, I'm always adding pH buffer every service on every tank just to help keep that pH up. Now would be a good time to introduce the pH buffer. It's suggested that you dissolve it in fresh water so you could actually pour it into the five gallon bucket that we're going to use to hold the fresh water that we're ultimately pouring in the tank to dissolve the salt level or bring that salinity down. And very easily the pH buffer dissolves in the water. We'll now lift the bucket up and pour the two gallons of fresh water back into the aquarium. This will help drop the salinity a bit. We can now go ahead and start pouring the new salt water into the tank. You may have heard me toot my horn in the past, but I use real ocean water. The biggest advantage to me is I don't have to fool around making salt water. I receive 500 gallons every two weeks, directly from the ocean. But regardless of whether you're using real ocean water or making up your own salt water with a synthetic salt mix, both work just as good as the other. I would suggest though, if you're going the synthetic route, that you will want to make the time to make the seawater at least 24 hours in advance. That will allow it to completely dissolve so that what you're entering is seawater, 
not water full of salt particles. And before we turn the power filter back on, now would be a good time to go ahead and change that filter cartridge. This is the power filter. Essentially, it's a box that hangs on the back side of the aquarium. And for the water to pass back to the aquarium, it has to pass through a filter cartridge. This is the power filter. You can see over time, it does splatter a little bit of salt around. But that's kind of typical for most saltwater aquariums. You can see it's got a filter cartridge here. The cartridge traps debris, and then within the cartridge are black granules that help remove colors and odors. We'll go ahead and slip a new cartridge in place. I usually call the uh, homeowner between visits and remind them to uh, change the filter cartridge because if it doesn't, if it gets plugged up and water starts going around it through the spillway here, the bypass, does the aquarium no good because it's not passing through the cartridge. My name is Jim Stein, I'm with Midwater Systems, and I'm the developer of the Jelly Aquarium. The Jelly Aquarium is a tank designed specifically for the keeping of jellyfish. I offer five different sizes of tanks designed to be built into a wall or a freestanding cabinet. I also offer the inexpensive Mini Jelly Aquarium, which has its filter system built into its backside. Additionally, I offer tank-raised moon jellyfish as well as a line of tanks designed for producing your own jellyfish. For more information on this fascinating world of keeping jellyfish, visit jellyquarium.com. You heard the phrase bio pellets, but really, what are bio pellets and what will they do? But basically, what the bio pellets are is they're a biodegradable polymer. The pellets, you put them in a reactor and they tumble in the reactor and the bacteria grow on the surface of the bio pellet and they consume the bio pellet and as part of their metabolic process they also consume nitrate and phosphate right out of the water. After about uh, two weeks the bio pellets were activated and the nitrate started to drop. And uh, you can see when you open them on the top, there's your little instruction sheet and that's what the pellets look like Oops, <laughs> when they're dry. Bio pellets and bio pellet reactors are available through Reef Dynamics. Call 707 733 3411 or reefdynamics.com for more information. And quite often the power filter will lose its uh, prime. We're going to use our uh, vacuum attachment here as a means of adding water into the power filter so it can prime itself and then we'll go ahead and plug it back in. And here's one of those unfortunate situations where the impeller is getting so old it doesn't start back up. Now it's possible that that impeller it's gotten plugged up with a bunch of schmutz in there, so it probably wouldn't hurt to take it out and give it a little cleaning, this being the impeller assembly. It doesn't look that dirty, but you'd be amazed at the amount of schmutz and the effect that it can have on the impeller. And this is probably a $20 item, so certainly worth getting a uh, replacement in, on hand. We'll go ahead and clean that uh, impeller housing as well. Reposition the impeller, slide the uh, intake assembly back in place, the 
and let's see if that uh, starts up any easier this time. Now we've got success, but at the same time, and the power filter is beginning to prime itself, we still should consider um, not just cleaning, but uh, replacing that impeller assembly. The real reality is that when you're not home, if for some odd reason the power were to temporarily go out, when the power came back on, it's quite possible that impeller assembly just might not start back up again. And if that's the sole source of aeration in your tank, you're going to come home to a sad surprise. So we're just about ready to start putting the decorations back in. Just kind of want to go through and double check all the steps. We check the salinity in the beginning. We determined we needed to add some fresh water. We then got our working area ready. We pulled the coral, the dirty coral decorations out of the tank. We went through and dislodged the uh, power head so that we don't uh, cause any problem with the clownfish eggs. We can probably go and put that back in position now. The power head I'm referring to was dropped further down in the aquarium when we started the service. The idea was to minimize the exposure of the clownfish eggs on top of it to the air or surface of the aquarium. We went it through <clears throat> and cleaned the uh, acrylic panels. We cleaned the green band at the bottom of the tank, which is usually an indication of an under gravel filter. We used our bottle brush and went through and did the uplift tubes. We changed the um, filter cartridge in the power filter as well as clean the intake strainer and impeller assembly. Went through and vacuumed the gravel, replenished the salt water, uh, replenished it with some fresh water to bring the salt level down. I think we're now ready to start putting some coral decorations back into the tank. The decorations I'm referring to are the dead coral skeletons. This is a staple in my aquarium maintenance business, and I have each customer with two sets of corals. One that's in the tank getting dirty, the other one that I'll have at home, and when the service is scheduled, I'll bleach those corals in advance, thus bringing out nice, white, clean pieces. The advantage is not having to be forced to bleach the corals at the customer's location and potentially reintroducing bleach into the system. And I think I can add a little bit more fresh water, I'm sorry, salt water, to fill the tank up a little further. Something that I would like to point out, and that is in any aquarium, you never want the water level in the tank to come up and touch the inside top of the aquarium. That'll eliminate the aquarium's ability to breathe. One of the things we need to do is clean the lens in the light hood, otherwise the light itself doesn't make it into the tank. What I should be doing is removing the lens from the light hood, taking it into the kitchen, the lens that is, and using some vinegar to help clean not only the algae that's on the lens, but the vinegar will help eliminate the calcium that's built up on the inside of the lens, thus making it an easy place for algae to get a foothold and a harder place for me to get rid of it. Before we put the canopy on, we'll use some uh, acrylic cleaner and polish. Polish the front of the tank. And again, for those of you who are new to the LA Fish Guys series, you never want to use Windex or an ammonia-based cleaner on an acrylic aquarium. The ammonia will quickly frost the acrylic. So what you want to seek out is an acrylic polish or an acrylic cleaner, one made specifically for acrylic materials. And then we'll go ahead and put the canopy back on. My point of this video was um, you can do smallish saltwater tanks but I was always taught not to do less than 55, 60 gallons, and anything smaller is just gonna become that less stable. So if you're determined to do a small saltwater tank, you've gotta be on top of it all the time. That's how I take care of this tank, and I've been doing it for uh, 15, maybe 16 years now, and uh, granted, there's some different fish, but I've never had a major crash, namely because I stay on top of it. So you should stay on top of things as well and always keep moving forward.